Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Array. Pancakes. They're delicious. They're light and fluffy and really great for editing in Premiere Pro. Wait, what? That's right. Pancake timelines are a really great way to save time working in Premiere Pro. But what is a pancake timeline and how do you use it? Well, let's dive into Premiere Pro and learn about it together. So what is a pancake timeline? It's basically when you stack two or more timelines on top of each other. Think about these two timelines as being a stack of two delicious pancakes. The benefit of this method is that you can move around clips between them and even copy clips between them. So let's start with how do you set up this timeline to work like this? Start by having at least two timelines to work with. If you only have one at the moment, simply go to your project manager, right click and duplicate your timeline. Now grab one of your timeline tabs at the top here. From here you can move it all around and see where it will end up by these highlighted sections. Drag one of these timelines onto either the top or the bottom section and then release it with your mouse. Now what you should see is that your timelines are stacked on top of each other. From here you can work with each of these timelines individually. When you do so, the video playback will respond to which timeline you're working with at that moment. Essentially here you've already created the pancake timeline, but now the question is, how do you use it effectively? This can come down to a matter of preference, but what most people go for is the idea that you have a selection of clips. Normally, the process of your clip assembly would take place in two parts. The first part is in the project manager, where you would make a selection within your clips and then drag those clip selections onto your timeline. On the timeline is step two, and from there you simply work with them and try to edit and organize your final product. But with the pancake timeline, you can work in three steps. Bring your clips in from your project manager that have been whittled down to their usable parts. Some people call this process selection, and other people go as far as to call this timeline selects. For us, I'm simply going to call it good shots. From here, you can duplicate your timeline, and I'm going to name this new timeline full edit one. Then I'll delete everything inside of full edit one and bring it into its pancake formation. From here, you can now start with our new third step. We've already made selections of our rough clips, one, brought them onto a timeline of all of the selected good shots, two, and now we can select from that smaller selection of only good shots to comprise our final edit, three. This can dramatically help you to save time as you have a much smaller range of footage that you're searching through and it's always in clear view. Instead of having a bunch of excess unused footage at the end of your timeline, sectioned off just using in and out markers and not including them in the final export, you can actually use just an entirely unique timeline and then all of your rough unused clips are still right there, but have no chance of interfering with your main edit. This also gives you the advantage of choosing one of two options, moving clips over onto the new timeline or copying them over onto the new timeline. When you move a clip over, it should automatically copy it instead of deleting it from the previous one but you can also manually delete clips from the previous timeline if you so choose. The reason you may want to just move them over entirely is so that when you choose to use a clip, you don't include that in the list of other clips that you may also want to take from later. In essence, it makes it easier to find new clips to use in the final sequence because there's less selected clips to choose from. On the other hand, you may want to duplicate clips in so that you have a full view of all the clips that you have to work with. Or maybe there's the possibility of using the same clip twice in your final edit. Or maybe you just don't like deleting things. Either way, the freedom is yours to use this method however it best improves your workflow. That's the great part of editing, is that you get to do it how you want. And that's a basic overview of the Pancake Timeline. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, consider liking it, or sharing it with a fellow video editor, or even subscribing to our channel. You can also find all of our tutorials over at motionarray.com. We'd love to see you over there. But thanks so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.